welcome to MJ Hobby Corner, everyone. And this is Solo Wargaming with MJ. Today we are going to experiment with Reaper Warlord in my brand new tiered board. And there's the surface of the board with the teleporter. And then we have the underground cavern level. And there's a second cavern level right down below. And uh, we are going to change the locale of the board in just a minute so that it can spin fully and I can have access to all the models. So uh, basically Reaper Warlord, it's a very good game. Uh, it has a ton, a ton of factions. There are two books associated with this game. It has a very unique uh, damage track system in the uh, stat cards. So when you receive damage, you move your... Um, little marker to the next damage track and then the stats tend to change uh, sometimes they don't depending on the model but most of the time something will change uh, and so your model gets a little weaker uh, so it, it's a very unique system it goes by a system they call that they call the rage system or the rage mechanic Okay, so uh, I will have more on Reaper Warlord in another video uh, but again, this is a very good, um, very good game. And it also has um, a lot of leaders. And so you, it has very concise rules about building warbands using leaders uh, for every troop. Uh, a troop in this game is synonymous with a unit. Um, so basically, I've done a few modifications to the game, namely... I'm playing with very low model counts, so I uh, reduce the minimum number of models that a troop can have uh, with their leaders, and I'm using mostly sergeants and, and a captain, I believe, in a couple of situations. So, uh, yeah, it, it's going to be uh, very much simplified so I could test it on this board. First turn activation goes to Dark Reach with a two, and uh, I'm going to uh, show a little bit of the movement, and then I'm going to summarize everything because there's going to be a lot of moving, uh, not a lot of action. So we're just going to summarize. Uh, here, the priestess moves six inches, and I use my measuring stick. Very useful in this case. The guard is just going to move right behind her and then we have arachnolith who's going to take the rear they, they go, there they go they look kind of cool there uh and so the priestess takes her first troop out through the cramped tunnel towards the access tunnel that leads 
to the upper level and to the objective. All right, Dark Reach took first turn. Let's just see the next card, what that is. It is another Dark Reach turn. So they're going to move right behind them. And now I'm going to summarize turn one. We see turn one coming to an end. And uh, now Dark Reach has advanced through the tunnel, inching towards the objective. Uh, they had like three turns in a row because of the card activations. And uh, there they are. Meanwhile, above, the orb drew its card, which is the Joker card. And that means since there are no skellies on the board, the orb can form three skellies. And that's what it did. Three skellies suddenly appeared from the bone piles on the cave. And now the orb has some protection. Uh, that also meant that a card, a diamond card, had to be added to the deck for the skellies. Meanwhile, Revan begins to teleport from above. And we have the Beastman Hero right on the root teleporter. And he just appeared there. He could not move forward. And then the rest of Revan is up on the surface. And they're getting ready to teleport down once Beastman Hero moves from the portal and the portal can be reactivated. So Revan simply moves forward and gets ready to teleport from the tree to the caverns. Turn two. Turn two sees a card drawn. It is Dark Reach, uh, but this turn's also going to be summarized. She's going to move to the base of the stairwell here, and her troop is simply going to follow suit with Arachnalith taking up the rear. And that is their final position in turn two, getting ready to climb up the tunnel here, the access tunnel. And now let's see who goes next. Revan goes next. So we are going to move the Beastman Hero. Uh, that's three inches, so he's going to come down three inches right down there. And then he can move another four. And moves to the best of his ability through the cramped tunnel, getting uh, ever closer to the objective chamber. And now the rest of Revan, whenever they activate, let's see what card is next. And it is Dark Reach. Okay. So Dark Reach goes down below, and we're just going to see them move closer to each other. So uh, I'm going to take, simply take the wizard, and he moves behind Arachnalith. And that is that. And now we take another card, and it is a diamond, so one of the skelly troops can move and they they can move up to six inches away from the portal from the orb i mean so we're just going to move them up to the archway as they sense the orb senses something coming through and now we pull another card and we see that it's dark reach and so i'm just going to move evishandra down here we see all of the Dark Reach Elves with the Priestess in front, followed by a Shadow Guard, followed by Arachnalith, the Sorcerer, and then Evashandra and the Shiver Spike taking up the rear. All right, so turn two is not over, and we see Gronk's entire troop has teleported uh, on the root portal. Uh, we see up here on the surface, we see that the Knoll Shaman is about to enter the teleporter, but it cannot activate while there are figures on the root section of the portal. So they will have to move next turn, and then the Shaman could come in. The uh, Beastman Hero is well ahead, and he's just, he wants that orb line of dark reach. Uh, the Priestess and her troop and all the troops behind her are moving through the tunnel towards the access tunnel uh, to get to the objective. Now the orb uh, created another troop of skellies and so now there are two troops of skellies. The next time a joker is drawn the orb can move 
instead of creating more skellies. And that ends turn two, turn three. So you guys get an idea how the activation uh, turn works. Uh, I'm going to draw a card. It is Dark Reach. And now I'm just going to summarize the turn again uh, to get the movement closer to the action. So the Priestess is simply going to move up here. And I already measured that. It's a little bit under uh, six inches, but very close. And she's going to move up forward with Arachnelith in the rear. And now Dark Reach is approaching the access tunnel towards the objective. So uh, I'll just summarize the rest of the turn. Turn three is now over and the priestess and her dark reach companions move ever closer, inching uh, inch by inch through the tunnels uh, and are getting closer to the chamber. Uh, meanwhile, here the orb on its card activation moved uh, a few inches into the middle of the chamber. Then it repositioned the skellies to block the entrance here to the access tunnel. And then it drew another card which repositioned the other skellies right in front of the archway. So they're forming a little uh, bone wall there uh, uh, to protect uh, the orb from the coming Revan figures. Now, we don't know if those skellies are going to be enough, but it can keep uh, forming them. As long as skellies die, it will keep forming them on a Joker card. Uh, Beastman Hero now sees the skellies. This turn is going to see some action. And then we have Gronk and his troop immediately came down from the portal, moved up a bit, and that gave the room to, for the Null Shaman to activate the portal and come down. So Revan is now completely in the cavern and a little bit behind, but they're going to catch up very closely here in turn four. All right, now turn four, I am going to film. Uh, I've been summarizing mostly. We're going to draw, we're going to um, shuffle our activation deck and continue with turn four. Turn four sees Revan activating first. All right, let's go to Revan. So Beastman Hero moves seven inches, so there's more than enough space. He's going to move into combat with one of the skillies. And he has two attacks. Uh, now he is in base-to-base -base contact with two skellies at the moment, so he can split his attacks. But uh, I think he's just going to put all of his attacks into one, uh, one of the skellies. So he has two attacks, two dice. His, let's see, his melee attack value is five. So he adds five to each of his rolls. And the defensive value of the skellies is eight. So he needs a three or over in any of the dice to hit. Uh, okay. And let's see what other things he has. He has Rage and Bloodlust. Okay, so the Beastman Hero has a plus seven uh, because of Bloodlust. And then Rage. Rage gives him a plus one melee attack value uh, bonus. And that's only on the first time it charges. So this is the first time it charged. So he's getting a plus seven altogether. Now the skellies are going to strike back and there's two of them. So each one have one die. Uh, they do have cleave, but they have to beat the uh, defensive value of 11 with their roll in order to get that extra plus one damage. So let's see what the skellies do. Skellies have to roll a nine or a 10. And we are going to roll for the skellies because... And he's only doing it on one skelly. He didn't split his attacks. So. Okay. So a three and a one does not do it. Strike was. It, both strikes. Uh, both skellies that attacked. So one skelly is destroyed. Uh, the other skelly got a chance to strike back as well. Because he is in base to base contact with the big hero. Uh, but he didn't do any damage either. If the hero had separated his attacks, he would have uh, destroyed both skellies at the same time. But 
All right, so one down, two to go. In turn four is another Reverend card, so the Gronk and his troop is going to move forward to get into the action. This is four inches, Gronk himself, and another two inches will put him roughly there. And then the rest of his crew can move. So Orc Spearman moves there. And then he can move another couple of inches closer to his leader. And same thing with the Archer. No Archer. So this is five inches. And we're going to put him here for a total of six. And that's where Gronk's troop. Uh, ends up ready to give some support. Doesn't le look like the hero needs support against the skellies, however. All right, it is now Dark Reacher's turn, and so we will spin the board. And they get forever closer to the target. So this is... Um, all right, this is two inches, so two inches of our movement. Right up here. She makes it there. And then another one, two, three, four, right here. So Priestess is almost up the ramp here. So that's uh, two. That's another two. So that's four. And then five, six. So that puts the shadow guard roughly over there behind his mistress. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And Arachnolith, we're just going to leave Arachnolith there. She has like eight inches or something of movement. But that's where the priestess and her troop are just above the top. And guess what? We get another dark reach. So Dark Reach is going to be moving up. And the Sorcerer moves up the stairs, all the way up the stairs. And now another Dark Reach card. So Evashandra and her Shiver Spike, uh, her troop moves. And she moves up here. And then Shiver Spike is covering the rear as best he could. So he's going to... He's gonna pose wherever he can we're gonna leave him down here and he is up on this staircase okay so the dark elves have moved and Revan will soon be in contact with them all right skellies now skellies they can move all the way down the stairs they can move down here and still Um, I think they can, let's see, yeah, they're still within six inches, so they're just going to move here as best they can and intercept at the stairs, a 10, and it is Revan, and so, uh, that means that the sorcerer, the shaman, uh, she moves seven inches, so all the way she'll use the entire stick to move here. And now Revan is together, and everybody's advancing forward. We draw another card, and it is a Joker card. Um, the Skellies cannot come back until the entire troop is destroyed. So the orb is going to move back. It's not going to form skellies until that troop is destroyed. Then another troop of skellies can be formed. And now this is uh, 10. Which means that the skellies engage to the beast master. I mean, yeah, to the beast man. Heroic beast man. Uh, they're going to attack him. And they do not get the benefit of support because they are mindless. They can support uh, figures that are not mindless, but they cannot support each other. Poor skellies. Okay, so mindless skellies go. And again, they're going to need to roll very high. A 9 or a 10. Two dice. 
And it, a three and a four does not do it. And he has defensive strikes. So now he attacks with a five. Uh, he does not get the plus one for rage because this is not his first turn. But he does get bloodlust. So uh, plus one to defensive strikes and melee for bloodlust. So that so now if he gets a one, he actually fails. So he rolls an eight and a one. So one defensive strike fails, but one hits, and that does one damage to a skelly. Turn five. Revan. Okay. Well, Revan is up here. Let's handle this battle. So now the uh, Beast Master Hero is going to uh, do his attack. But this time he's going to split his attacks. Um, he has two attacks. And... Uh, he doesn't get rage bonus this time because it's not the first time he charged. So he does get bloodlust. So if he rolls ones, he fails. Uh, and he needs only an eight or over to, uh, hit. And that's because their defensive value is so low. All right. So he gets a one and a 10. So the one means a miss, but one skelly gets hit real hard. But before he gets hit... The skellies are going to do their attacks, and they need a 9 or a 10. An 8 and a 5, very close, but no go. Uh, one skelly is missed, one skelly is destroyed, uh, the one with the damage. And so two skellies are down, and that is all with that battle. There's only one one-on-one -on -one left. Uh, next is a skelly move. Um... Well, let's give it to this last skelly. He's going to try and uh, attack. And so skelly rolls. He rolls a 6. No go. Uh, the defensive value is an 11 for the hero. The hero uh, does strike back. He rolls a 2 and a 4. So, yep, he does hit, uh, and that is two strikes on the skelly, and that is the end of the skelly. They only have one damage track apiece. Now, whenever a joker is formed, another three skellies are formed, and we uh, eliminate one skelly card from the pile of activation cards. Okay, so uh, this is now Dark Reach. And now Dark Reach is going to come right up the board. And I think the Priestess. Let's see. Um, well, she doesn't have line of sight because there is a wall here. So she's going to move right here. And now she has line of sight. And that's going to be it. Um, we have to consider that there is a tall wall here, so that Skelly's hidden by that wall. So she moves there and gets a little bit of a surprise. Uh, the rest of her troop moves up. And Arachnalus is eager to get into the fight. But that's where her troop stops, and they are just about to join the action. We have another Dark Reach card, which moves the Sorcerer. And he can't quite see in front of his comrades. We have another Revan card. So we move over to Revan. Hmm. Now Beastmaster already went. So uh, he can't. All right, let's see. So Gronk is going to move right behind the Beastmaster. And then the rest of his troop is going to squeeze on in. And we have a guy with a spear there. I believe he has reach. So, uh, yep, he does have reach. And so that uh, he will be able to lend support. So that's good. Next card is dark reach again. Um, and now uh, the only thing to do is move Evashandra 
right behind the wizard as they have been moving. She mo moves a little bit less there. And then the shiver spike, which is going to move right to the top of the stairs. Okay. So the line of dark elves has reformed. They really have to get out of this tunnel, however, in order to uh, really fight effectively. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, we have two cards left. One is Revan. And then we're just going to move the Shaman. Shaman moves right behind. And he doesn't have anything in line of sight. He can't. He's frustrated. He can't really do much. Uh, the Joker card. And now that a Skelly Troop was gone, the orb now forms three more Skellies. So they may be weak, but they keep coming out. And uh, they will weaken you little by little. So, uh, yeah, another three skellies are formed. That ends turn five. Moving on to turn six. The position of the figures after turn five. Have a Chandra and the Shiver Spike. The Sorcerer, Naraneid. And we have the Priestess Troop right here. And they're about to face... The Skelly Warriors, we have a new Skelly Warrior uh, component that has reappeared, resurrected by the orb. And then Revan is all together now and ready to charge in to the objective chamber to try and claim the orb before Darkreach does. Okay, turn six initiative, and we see Revan. Yep, he can make it. So he's going to bash into these skeletons in a charge. And he makes it. And with a charge, he can move an extra two inches if he didn't touch base to base. So he definitely has enough range for a charge. All right, so now he's not going to have to roll because he has very high bonuses. So he's going to take two dice. He's going to split his attacks between two skellies. And that means... Uh, okay, so he it, uh, hits them automatically. And now they get their strikes. So let's see. Each, let's see which skelly. Oh, there's only one skelly in base-to-base -base contact. So we're going to have to move them there. Yeah, so there's two skellies now in base-to-base -base contact. So with a 4, they have to beat an 11. So they need at least an 8. A 9 and a 6. Alright, 1 skelly. 6 and 4 is 10. That is not an 11. But a 9 and 4 does hit. So 1 skelly scores a hit on Craig before uh, he obliterates them. So 2 skellies. Us uh, each have they might not be dead yet. No, they need one more hit each in order to be dead. So, uh, an exchange of blows, two skellies are about to go down, but they hold firm. One more shot apiece, and they are destroyed. All right, let us see what happens. And it's another Revan card. So, we are going to move Gronk. Okay gonna move him up to here right past the archway his whole troop moves I'm gonna move the spearman uh, spearman has reach okay so Noel is gonna take a shot uh, Skelly has deflect one so I add one to his defensive value that makes it a nine so let's see uh, Noel Archer has a plus three due, due to his ranged attack value so let's see Noel Archer only gets one attack. He rolls a six. All right, so uh, eight, nine. Okay, so that's a hit on the Skelly. And this Skelly takes one damage, one more. Uh, and he is also obliterated. So every Skelly has a, a damage associated with it. And now we have the Joker card. Okay, so... <laughs> Now, this model can fly over uh, models without a problem, but it has nowhere to go. 
Uh, I know skellies that it can put down until these skellies are done with. So he's just going to stay right there. Uh, no other defense either. So uh, pulling another card and we see it's a skelly card. Okay. So uh, we're just going to move these skellies into combat. They're each damaged. Unfortunately, they do not uh, gain support because they are mindless. Uh, otherwise, they would gain support if they were not mindless. They can support living models, however, but they cannot support each other. All right, so um, we're just going to do one dice per skelly. Uh, so three dice for them, and then the beast man takes his defensive strike. Okay, one and a four, that hits. Uh, eight and a four definitely hit. And a five and a four is a nine. That does not hit. So two hits on Treg. Okay, and now let's do Treg's defensive attack, which is two. Um, and now he has to roll. Now if he rolls, uh, now he does roll. If he rolls a two, uh, if, he, he, if he rolls a one on any hit, uh, he, he misses. So... Uh, he rolled an 8 and a 10, so both of his hits connect. Both of his hits. So uh, his defensive strikes are going to go on this and this skelly. So uh, each of this one receives one hit. That's all it needed uh, to be destroyed. And then this one's going to receive one hit. That's all it needed to be destroyed. And then Trog receives two damage himself. And he is on the last damage track. Okay. So that ends that. Okay, and let's see the next card. Next card drawn is Dark Reach. All right, so Dark Reach gets into the fray. And now the Priestess, she does have spells. She's a Warcaster. She has ice. All right, I'm going to look at her spells a little bit. Uh, her tome is ice. and Let's see what happens. Okay, so the priestess is not going to uh, spell cast at this time. She is just going to move into base to base and uh, do a charge. She gets two attacks and it, she's going to attack the first skelly. Uh, there's no... Um, and then he's going to strike back. So uh, let's do that. She's going to roll two dice. Skelly rolls one and see what happens. All right, so... She adds her melee attack value, which is four. She needs a, only a four over to hit the skelly. He is defensive value eight, and she is defensive value 11. So skelly's going to need at least a seven to hit her. All right. So purple dice, I have three dice, and red dice is going to be the priestess. So purple dice needs a seven, and red dice just need a four. All right, uh, the Skelly scores a, a strike back hit. Uh, she scores one hit and one miss. So uh, they take diamond damage simultaneously. The Priestess takes one damage. So Skelly only has one damage point left. And to Delira, the Priestess, if she gets hit two more times, she's done. So she, they are both damage the rest of her troops gonna move up i'm gonna say that this um he can attack uh with support so uh we're gonna do that let's uh conclude his action first before we move arachnolith from the rear uh so he is the shadow guard so he moves in melee attack value is six very good so a six, so he just needs a two or over. Uh, he has stealth and provoke. All right, let's check this out. Okay, so provoke just means all defensive strikes must go to him. So they can't be split. Um, all right, and stealth, he cannot be targeted by range attacks from farther than 12 inches away. That's good to know. Okay, um, so let's do this. So melee attack value of six, how many attacks he gets two so i'm going to give him the two red dice he only needs twos to hit and skelly is going to do a defensive strike against him 
uh, and let's see if there's any penalties. Okay, so he's going to get an additional bonus because of her presence, so that's another plus one. So really, uh, he's going to be able to hit automatically. But let's let's roll first and apply the bonus after. So uh, he just needs twos or over. He rolls two sevens, and of course, with that bonus of support is eight. So four hit. And Skelly hits, let's see, with an eight. Plus four is 12. His defensive value is 10. So he takes a damage. And Skelly's obliterated. And Skelly is obliterated. Okay. All right. Well, it looks like there's one troop of Skelly's on the board. So the next time the orb gets a Joker card, it can summon another three Skelly's. Okay. And now, a Dark Reach pulls a card. Oh, by the way, Arachnalus has to finish her move. I should have moved her during the movement, even though it was his... Well, yeah, he should have moved her first. She should have moved first, and then he would conduct, go back and conduct his attack. That was a mistake on my part. All right, so uh, her troop is complete, and now we have another troop. So we're going to move the sorcerer here. He still doesn't know what's going on over there he knows there's something coming down there's some fighting here but he he doesn't have line of sight and too many enemies in front that is the cramped stage of the cave for you next is Revan now Revan knows something's up now um and so right now all they can do is the wizard is gonna move seven inches I believe she has uh, four, and then another two, and she's going to move right there. Okay. Okay, and I hate to do this, but we are going to stop it here. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a cliffhanger. Uh, in the next game, we will set up the board uh, just as is, or I'll leave the figures as they are, and uh, we'll see Revan is just about to claim the orb, and in the next game, we'll just uh, see if they can escape to the through the root teleporter. Um, now, Darkreach still has to defeat a couple of skellies. Once the orb is taken, it can't perform skellies. It can't form skellies or do anything. Um, so if they can defeat those skellies, then they can go after Revan. And if they take the orb, if they kill the model with the orb, then they can take it and try to... Uh, you know, win the game that way. So we'll see what happens in game two. And again, I usually don't like to do two-parters. I prefer to do uh, one, just one solid game. But uh, we've played six turns and uh, I have to move on to do other things. So I'll edit this video and, and uh, hopefully we've seen, uh, we have seen something of combat and the board works very well. This board was designed for 20, uh, 172 scale. So it wasn't designed for 28 millimeter, but it, it works well. I mean, it really gives you the sense of a very cramped environment, the way it crevices uh, would be, and uh, caverns rather. And uh, so it's not too bad. And it's given me ideas for uh, the construction of other accessories that you know, would enhance uh, 28 millimeter play. It's a little uh, different a feel when you're playing, you know, deploying vertically as, as opposed to horizontally. Um, but I really like it. I, I really, really uh, liked it. Uh, it does, again, present some challenges, which I welcome. Um but it's a good board. I, I really do like it. We're going to experiment more with this um, in, in the smaller scales. Okay. So, and there's the first level all the way down. So in the next game, uh, Revan is about to take the orb. So thank you very much, folks. Um, 
If you want to support my scratch building work, uh, you can definitely join Patreon. You can also join, you can also uh, visit War Games Vault and check out Scratch Builder Monthly and all of these Scratch Builder uh, single project issues that I have there. And that definitely helps a lot. Uh, and also uh, like, share our videos as well here on the channel. And uh, we definitely welcome uh, new subscribers. So have a good one, folks, and uh, hopefully I'll get the second part out as soon as I can.